Today's video is on five weird ancient foods that we used to eat. Number five, sea urchins. Sea urchins were a part of ancient Rome cuisine. It was originally believed that they were only eaten by the Roman upper class, but later finds indicate that sea urchins could also be served for the poorer Romans in restaurants, along with oysters, snails, sea scorpions, and other seafood. Sea urchins, just like every other seafood, were highly praised and adored in ancient Rome, so the fact that they were part of their cuisine isn't surprising at all. There were many ways of preparing sea urchins, but most of them included boiling them in a mixture of olive oil, sweet wine, and pepper. One weird method of eating sea urchin was to simply crack it open, clean it out, and enjoy. Sea urchins could also be found on top of a mega casserole that featured everything from brains to cheese. What's interesting is that the remains of sea urchins were found during an archaeological works in Pompeii, among other popular foods such as walnuts and grains. Number 4. Black Soup Black soup, also known as black broth, or melas zoma in Greek, was a staple soup eaten by soldiers in ancient Sparta. Although the exact original recipe for this dish has been lost, many people seem to believe that it contained boiled pig's legs, blood, salt, and also vinegar that was used as an emulsifier to help keep the blood from clotting during the cooking process. Black soup was not by any means a delicacy. Adding to their legacy for caring but nothing but warfare, black soup was mostly used for sustenance and strength. It was more akin to various hangover remedies and unpalatable concoctions used to awaken the body, even if unpleasantly so. This was said to enable the warriors of Sparta to remain vigilant, no matter the weather or other harsh conditions. Ancient writers joked that this was a pitiful diet, but also thought it made the Spartans brave. It was usually served with figs and cheese. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to our channel with notifications on. Number 3. Garum As the Roman Empire expanded, it created a great web of trade and commerce that crisscrossed the Mediterranean. This brought a whole new array of foods to the dining table. Among them was Roman's favorite new item, garum, a condiment so popular that it became one of the basic ingredients for many Roman dishes. The Romans adored garum, which they splashed on everything from meat to eggs to dessert. In fact, scholars and journalists refer to it as the ketchup of its day. It was a sauce made from the fresh guts of a still gasping fish and various parts, which would otherwise be thrown away. The fish guts were mixed with brine, fermented in the sun for three months, and filtered. Later, the upper layer of the mixture was taken off, and that was the garum. After that, herbs and spices could be added to the sauce. This fermentation process released a lot of protein from the fish, so garum was quite nutritious. While garum worked as an umbrella term, there were a variety of byproducts and qualities to the stuff. The sediment left behind in the fermentation process goes by the name alec, a sort of fish paste, and the brine left behind was muria. Garum may seem like disgusting rotten fish, but the resulting sauce actually had a very complex flavor. Garum was so popular that it was mass-produced. In fact, its mass production was a major part of the economy in cities like Pompeii. The Romans also used it in cosmetics, as medicine for dogs and crocodile bites, and a salve for burns and ulcers. The fish used for garum mattered a lot in what its quality would be. Most commonly, ancient Romans would use tuna, sardines, and mackerel. Garum also had a particularly strong odor. In fact, the fermenting garum smelled so bad that people were only allowed to make it outside of the cities. Number 2. Flamingo Tongues Flamingo tongues were considered very delicious food to be cooked and delivered to a Roman table. Not only was it said to be very tasty, but the luxury and delicacy of this dish was something which made the upper-class Romans love it. And if rich Romans really wanted to impress their friends, they would serve the whole flamingo at their banquets. It should be noted that sacrificing a bird in ancient Rome was believed to impress not only mere mortals, but the gods as well. They were also considered a representation of the wealth of the owner. In Roman times, having a roast flamingo on the table was a status symbol and a means of flaunting one's riches. Truly wealthy gourmets ate only the choicest parts, like the brains and tongue. Emperor Elagabalus was even said to offer the costly bird in sacrifice to the gods when a regular old chicken would have done just fine. 
Apicus, the most gluttonous gorger of all spendthrifts, established the view that the flamingo's tongue has a specially fine flavor. Speaking of Apicus, the book of recipes named after him represents the most complete primary source on ancient Roman cooking, and it features a recipe for flamingo in spiced date sauce with a note that parrot is served the same way. Here's what it says. Scald the flamingo, wash and dress it, put it in a pot, add water, salt, dill, and a little vinegar to be paraboiled. Finish cooking with a bunch of leeks and corianders, and add some reduced must or grape juice to give it color. In the mortar, crush pepper, cumin, coriander, laser root, mint, rue, moisten with vinegar, add dates, and the fond or drippings of the braised bird. Thicken, strain, cover the bird with the sauce, and serve. Number one, edible dormice, ancient Rome. Dormice were considered a luxury delicacy snack for the upper classes in ancient Rome. In fact, they were such a big deal that the archaeological evidence has been found to suggest that farmers raised dormice to sell to the upper class. It's important to note that dormice are not mice, and the ones ancient Romans ate are called edible dormice, the largest of all dormice. They are 5.5 to 7.5 inches, or 14 to 19 centimeters, in head body length. They weigh 4.2 to 5.3 ounces, but may also double in weight prior to hibernation. Edible dormice have a squirrel-like body with small ears, short legs, and large feet. In ancient Rome, edible dormouse was usually served for dinner, showing the guests how heavy it is by symbolizing the wealth of the owner of the house. Some of the most extravagant Roman feasts would even employ scribes to record the weight of the dormice served. The largest estates even had entire areas devoted to raising these animals. The dormice were served by either roasting them and dipping them in honey or stuffing them with a mixture of pork, pine nuts, and other flavorings, which added to the taste and made them look luxurious when the rich Romans were having their feast. Obviously, the bigger and fatter the dormouse, the better they were. The ancient Romans would catch them from the wild in autumn when they were the fattest. They would then keep them in either large pits or in special terracotta containers and feed them with acorns, walnuts, and chestnuts to make them even fatter. Once they were chunky enough, they could be cooked and served. Edible Dormouse earns a top spot on our list of five weird ancient foods we used to eat. And now, let's take a look at our honorable mentions. Whale Excrement Whale excrement, or ambergris, is a strong-smelling, waxy-feeling whale emission that's been used for centuries by humans, mostly in perfumes and medicine. The word ambergris is derived from the Old French ambergris, meaning gray amber. In perfume making, it acts as a fixing agent to help the scent last longer. When whales eat squid and the beaks get stuck in their system, a fatty fluid buildup starts to congeal around the mass, which is eventually ejected likely from the rear end of the whale, and that's ambergris. And people absolutely ate it, particularly in ancient Persia and India. The manuscript cookbook survey says it was often used as an additive, and after being such an integral part of medieval Arab culture, it eventually spread to Europe and became popular in Italy and France first, then finally England. It was a common ingredient in candies, pastries, whipped cream, puddings, cheesecakes, and even the occasional alcoholic beverage, adding a flavor described as earthy and musky.
I hope you all enjoyed today's video narrated by Zach this time. Be sure to subscribe for more and check out some of our recent uploads.